Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Becoming Podcast. Another wonderful guest with us today, Vicky Gadd, coming to us from the UK and uh, talking about Crystal. So uh, I'll get back with her in a moment to, for her to introduce herself. Um, please, I'll just take this moment now and at the end, like, share, subscribe, and comment. The algorithms have changed again, so they love the little comments, even say, hey, hi, that would be really helpful. So thanks very much. And my sponsor, Share at um, uh, webdesignshare.com. Thank you very much for all the help that you've been, you know, doing for me. It's been fantastic. Anyway, Vicky, hi. Thanks for coming on board. Um, you've got so many parts of you um, that you offer to people, but it's mainly around crystals. So can you tell us, what do you do? <laughs> yeah that's such a uh, small little question isn't it but it's like quite a big answer but um but hi Jamie and thank you so much for asking me on here it's very exciting I know we've been chatting for a while back and forth trying to get this to happen and it's finally happening today which is really exciting so what do I do I do wear like yourself what we were chatting about I wear many many different hats but yeah crystal the crystal hat is my absolute favorite. I am a um, crystal healer, crystal energy therapist. But I suppose my biggest passion with all of those things that I do, I do crystal healing, I do teaching of crystal healing, I make crystal bracelets, I make crystal candles, crystal gifts. My biggest passion is to educate people on how crystals can change your life, whether that is through having a healing with it or whether that's just wearing it as a bracelet or a necklace like you have in your, your own and like mine. If people understand that little bit more and not be so scared of crystal, so many people will buy a crystal and think that's pretty, that's beautiful. I don't know why I've got it, but I've got it. And then they go and pop it on a shelf in the house and then nothing really ever happens with it. They leave it there and then they forget about it. They don't know what they're supposed to do with it. They've lost the information on it. And then they think, oh, I don't know. I'll just leave it alone now because I might do something wrong. My biggest passion is to try and educate people that we have all of these tools inside of ourselves, all of that intuition, all of that knowledge. It's just a case of picking up the crystal, holding it, and allowing that information to download inside of you, trusting your own energy, trusting your own judgment. So whether that's through the medium of meditation, crystal therapy, wearing them, having them in your home, you know, it's just using them. So many people don't, you know, they'll put, get put in a drawer or one of the ones that I really dislike is when people pop a crystal in their purse, you know, and they're like, oh, well, it's meant to bring me money. And I'm like, no, but money's got so much kind of not great energy with it. We don't want that crystal to be with that money. Do anything but that. Put it in your pocket, put it in your bra, but not your purse. <laughs> no, 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 for sure. And and that's it. People do. And, and I find that as well is that they buy them with all great intentions but some of the people yeah. that, they, that they buy them from, especially the shops, they don't educate them on on how to look after them, how to cleanse them, um, how to how to clear them, and how to uh, to to re-energize them. And this, of course, is yeah. what you do. This is what where you come in with your teachings as well, isn't it? Yeah, and that's something that I did because I've been doing this for a very long time now, and I suppose I got more into the teachings of it when we all got forced into lockdown and I was taken from my clients as everybody was so I couldn't see my my lovely regular clients so I wanted to connect because I could feel as we all could the deep pain and the, and the fear that we were all holding also that, that disconnection we were all just forced apart so when lockdown happened, I then went, started doing, um, I think it was weekly, was weekly lives on Instagram for an hour or even two hours, actually, if I got very chatty, if I got my chatty head on. <laughs> <laughs> but we would talk about crystal, what you do with them, how you cleanse them. Then I would end with a meditation. And I did that for nearly two years, actually. And all of that is all still on my Instagram. And so many of my lovely clients or my followers, I put some of them on YouTube as well, but say that they still go back to those old ones and find the meditation of when we did like a root chakra one or a feeling safe one or a letting go one. And that was when I realized that people, they don't just want a crystal. They want to know what to do with them. They, they We can all Google it and look, so how do you do that? But you tend to forget unless you have that 
physical feeling and that um download of an energy and experience with crystal you're not you're not really going to remember it so you, you it's so difficult to store in our own minds then so i think that's what i was doing with my um instagram lives is being very interactive people were buying crystal because everybody was at home so the our online shop just went through the roof so everybody was buying crystal which which shocked me i'm a husband it was crazy but then they all needed some training, like, well, what do we do with them now? We've got them. So we were doing this interactive, wonderful um, weekly shows of this is what you do and this is how we use them. And now let's meditate with them. So it then I've always had the passion of trying to te teach people because so many people go, oh, I don't use it anymore because I don't know. I'm like, what? You know, this is the most amazing crystal. It's a beautiful tool. Even if you don't know what to do with it, we, you just put it outside, let it get some rain on it and then hold it. That's all you need to do. You know, that's the absolute minimum that you can remember. Just do that. So, yeah, that's my my biggest passion, what I do amongst everything else. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. And, and there is a lot as well. How did you How did you start? How did you get into this? Yeah, that's a good question. I was, um, I don't remember it, but I, my, we still have it. When I was five or six, I found a piece, a piece of crystal. Um, so I always believe that that's kind of your soul's purpose that, you know, you're resonating at that level and things come to you, don't they? And I know we all find different things at different times, but I found it in Wales uh, near Anglesey, which is um, a, a massive um, healing place for me. It feels like I have ancestral links and, and attachments there and I feel very at peace and at home there. And we were on holiday and I found this piece of pyrite, which is you know known as fool's gold. Yeah. Uh, but it's, and it was only little and I kept it. And I remember doing another podcast or no, I think I was writing about this for my, um, for my website, like what, what do you do? Who are you kind of thing? And I wrote about that and my mum got in touch. Should we still have that? Because my mum's a hoarder and I'm so <laughs> grateful for that. <laughs> so she said, I still have it. And I was like, you're kidding me. So I still have it now, this gorgeous piece of pyrite, which is you know, people, they, they know it for fool's gold because it looks like gold. But actually it's, it's, it's like having a personal coach in your pocket. If you have pyrite with you, you put it in your pocket or your bra or just have it with you the whole time. It's like this amazing coach that's always going, you've got it. You're amazing. You can do it. And it gives you this abundance of energy and self-belief. And it's got this fizz about it, but also a grounding fizz because it's a heavier metal, metallic type crystal. So it grounds all of that exuberance as well. So, yeah, pyrite was because that really explained kind of who I was as a child as well as like very nice. <laughs> but it also grounded all of that. So it it was very, it's such a very special crystal to me. And that started me on my journey. I don't, I wouldn't have then gone into it from the age of five, but I was always intrigued with crystal, what they can do, why they're so different. How on earth did our earth make these? How can they be 4.4 billion years old? How can the earth make them these colors? You know, I was just like, wow. And then um, my journey just carried on where you find the people that you need to do and found more crystals and so on. But yeah, the very beginning was when I found it, found this very first crystal. Fantastic. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a lovely story. And, and uh, I have pyrite as well um, here. I think most uh, people who are into crystals have a little bit of pyrite somewhere around. Um, okay. But yeah, the crystals around the house and I have a lot and, uh, and uh, I've, like, like many of us would probably like more. Um, it's always sort of taking on as many as we can there. But you being a crystal healer, what, what is a crystal healer and how does that work? So um, it's, it's the, well, in a very basic way, it's, it's kind of different because I, I do work differently. But in a very basic way, it is the laying down of crystal. It's somebody lying down on a bed a treatment therapy room, putting crystals on their body, on their energy systems, the chakras, the energy doorways that we have going up and down our body, placing crystals around those, almost like crystal grids, really, on each each one. Um, I have crystals in my hand when I'm working. I very often work with my pendulum. This is my pendulum that I wear as my necklace as well. Um, and I connect with their energy system. 
And I'm an energy, intuitive energy reader as well. So I read their auric field because you pr- you'll know all about, you will definitely, Jamie, know all about the auric field and how it's filled with layer upon layer. We are like onions, aren't we? And all of these layers hold so much information. And I can read that information when I'm doing a crystal therapy treatment like Braille. So I can feel or read or see what trauma is written in their auric field, what they've held on to, what they need to bring into their lives. And very basically, by me channeling, I see myself as just this tube. I am just a mere conduit, channeling in the energy from the universe and from our earth, channeling through my heart, down my arms, into the crystals in my hand or my pendulum, blasting that into their blocks or um, chakras to bring alignment, pulling it all away and then pouring positive energy in. So that's the physicalities of what I do with crystal therapy or crystal healing. Um, but it's it feels far more than that. You know, it feels like I am being able to get people to become the people they were always meant to be before life kind of got in the way really all those heavy things that we hold in our hearts or in our body and our joints in our auric field crystals have this amazing balanced energy very consistent and they along with the energy that I'm channeling you get this double blasting because the energy I'm channeling then goes through the crystal which then in turn amplifies the energy because the crystal the crystalline energy amplifies my energy so my clients get blasted really <laughs> when they're on the bed and I can release the energy and bring them back into alignment and tether them down into their soul and they can then go on to help themselves be um you know imbalanced and healed as much as they possibly can be yeah um, it's, that's fantastic it's really good so when you're working with somebody and they've had the blast of the energy and you're working with them and they and they calm and relax how are they after a session how are they feeling how are they how are they coping after a session how long does it sort of last that sort of healing session with them yeah well um it completely differs. Um, I've been doing crystal energy therapy for over 23 years now and have many, many, many clients, many beautiful clients. And I would say initially, when they very, very initially, they get off the bed, they feel quite spacey because um, so much energy has been blasted into their, their little cells and atoms and molecules that blasts away the dense energy. So they literally do feel like they're floating on air, but they also feel grounded. So it's a bit of a paradox. So they feel a lot lighter, heavy energy is lifted, but they feel so grounded and and feel like they've come back home. And then as they then begin to go home, because it doesn't wear off, it's not like you go for a massage and, you know, you come away thinking, well, that was nice, I'm nice and relaxed, but it begins to wear off. It doesn't just leave you the minute you walk out of the door, you you begin to feel very different because you feel grounded, you feel more settled, you feel safe, which is ultimately what I want to help my clients with. So they feel safe and at home in their own bodies. So when they do feel safe and at home in their own bodies, they can then go on to heal themselves because I don't heal people. I facilitate and release blockages so that energy can fall back into alignment, drop into their soul so they can then go on and release what's hurting them because they feel very held and safe in their own soul. So it can bring up so many things. They can begin to feel um firstly, very safe, very centered, but then emotions start to come up because they are in that place where they're plugged in now, rather than living outside of the box, they are now fully connected to themselves. So you're feeling stuff maybe for the first time. So they can start to feel more emotional. They'll feel enlightened. They'll feel like they have this huge open heart. It can be so very different for everybody, but you do have many physical, wonderful feelings, but the most common is feeling safe, grounded and settled within yourself Mm. um and then you start to work through the physicals of what is usually happening in your body you go through a treatment yeah i mean it's it's very it's it's crystals are physical i know because you're holding on to them you have them in your hand do you give them we don't call it homework we call it either home play or soul work do they have something to 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 do when they leave you 
Yeah, absolutely, because it is really important. I would say that it's not often that I will have somebody that just comes for one treatment either. They will need a few um, just so you're building up that trust. They're allowed, They're opening up that little bit more. It, it wouldn't be right either to have a session and you've cleared the lot and realigned the lot all in one go because that, that could um, just be a bit too much too soon. And it's also about them learning, having this new way in their own body and learning about how they can help themselves. So, Yes, my clients love homework. They love anything to go home with. And that's where all of my teachings come in because I'll have little recordings on my new platform where I'll say, check into that, do this meditation. Even if you just, because I know I do get it that so many people will come and see me and then they throw themselves back into life and it's busy, it's busy, it's busy. But I do, I do say, you know, if it's just two minutes, just two minutes per day, I'll, I'll I'll get them, encourage them. I'll see if I've got them here, actually, to hold two pieces of clear quartz like this. Yeah. They don't have to be as polished or beautiful as this. Just any pieces of clear quartz that have the terminations, the points at the end where the energy comes from, to hold those pieces of quartz in their hand and just sit and allow that energy to channel through them, then that would be the most wonderful thing for them to do. If it's just two minutes sitting every day, Checking in, allowing the energy to look within, holding the crystal, and then writing about it, whether that's on their phone, creating some voice notes if they wanted to do it faster, or in a journal. But it's just, I would say that's the, the absolute minimum that I get them to do is the two minutes per day. There's many other things that they can choose to do, but I know so many people are very busy. But my um, goal is for them to start to look within instead of outwardly you know, projecting and finding and trying to work out what's going on is is look within. And some days that might just be, do I have a word for myself today? What could be the word for me? And, you know, you have to look inside, think what is that word that that describes completely who I am today? And it's just one little really quick way of getting you to look inside because it's so very helpful. And that's that's one of the little homeworks that I do give them to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we're talking about before, but you, you also have courses available as well um, uh, in person and online. Can you can you share a little bit about those too, please? Yeah, the the in person ones I don't I don't actually do anymore. They're all they're all online now. I do in person retreats where we do the crystalline soul. Um, we've just done that. Actually, the first retreat we did was at this beautiful um, a countryside hotel, which is only 10 minutes up the road from where we live. And it's called Shrigley Hall. And it's a, such a lovely, old, stately home. And for two days, we were there with 20 other beautiful students learning all about a few treatments and sessions, meditations, a cacao ceremony. We did a bit of yoga. We had a sound bath. It was glorious. And then we all stayed the night. And then there was a, they have a um, outside beautiful um, pool area and, and, and inside jacuzzis and everything and treatment. So we had a spa day the next day. So it was all very lovely. So we do that once a year. That's called Crystalline Soul Live. Um, and then all throughout the year, which I only opened, it just launched in on Halloween last year. thought it was a good day to, to launch it, was my online courses, which is on this wonderful online platform where I've re-recorded because I feel that you learn every single day, don't you, when you do? If you're still working as a therapist, my teachings have changed so much for what I very first started teaching. And when I used to do crystal therapy, I only used to teach like groups of six in my own home. And, and then I got these messages from all over the world saying, I want to learn with you, I want to do this. So I thought, well, I, I need to put this online. So because my teaching is different and I've grown and I've learned so much more, and I think you still do every time you're working with crystal or working with any form of um, higher vibration, I wanted to bring my new learnings, and I still do every day, into my new courses. So I'm still recording. We have got... Um, I'd say about 40 courses on there now, one starting at literally just like five pounds, a mini course. There's masses of those. Then we've got the full diplomas in crystal energy therapy. And um, there's a membership on there where you can join and you'll get, it's a monthly subscription and you get access to 
already there's about 18 courses on there and a new one gets uploaded every single month. Um, and that also gives you discount to other courses and um, a, a little group on Facebook. But it's this is my biggest passion and my biggest brand new baby right now. And my crystalline soul, I am very, very proud of it because I love I love teaching and I love being able to pass that on, whether that's just a little course on how to make an elixir or how to cleanse your crystals, or if it's the full one. There's also all of masses of free courses and content on there as well, because I feel that, like I said, everybody needs to learn about crystal. So, yeah, that is my my new baby, which I'm very proud of. <laughs> yeah, well done. Well done. I mean, that, that's fantastic. Thank you. And, of course, you're right, because um, the people are changing. You know, we're evolving, we're developing, we're becoming a lot lighter. Oh. Um, we... we um, and you had to adjust and adapt to that with your teachings as well, you know, with everyone else that's coming in and people that are coming to you may have been uh, working with crystals, but not to the not to the level, and they want to learn more. And that's wonderful that they they can keep on progressing as they go along. Yeah, because it doesn't it it can't just be like in one box and go there you're done, can it? And and uh, I think that's. I think that's honestly my skill and my speciality is because I still work every single week with clients and I've done this for so long now because that 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 is just such a wonderful thing to do that my, the biggest learnings that I get that come to me and I'm quite sure this happens with you as well Jamie is when we're working because they just they just drop in don't they <laughs> Sometimes you just think, I'm just doing my healing and I've got my pendulum and I'm doing, and then all of a sudden this thing goes, Ooh, and you're like, what was that? And then you're like, oh my God. And then there's like this new download happens. And it's always when I'm with clients or I'm, I'm meditating. But the latest one for me is when I worked with this, my uh, very handily had it nearby with my Moldavite. Oh, nice. A, a very. Uh, very large piece of Moldavite I've got yeah. there, which I've actually had for about 20 years, and I lost it. Well, I didn't lose it. I forgot I had it. And it, as always, what happens in your life is I put it away in a box and just forgot about it because it mustn't have done anything for me. I was like, well, you know, it's fine, but I don't really get it. I don't understand it. So I put it away thinking, you're not for me. And then my lovely husband was doing some work in our wardrobe, and he found this box, and he got it out. He's like, whoa, look at that Moldavite. And he left it on our windowsill with the box open. I ran up the stairs, saw it like two days later because he forgot to tell me. And I was like, oh, my God, look at you. I forgot about you. Oh, oh, Instantly yeah. put it outside. I know. Oh, that's wonderful. I know. It's amazing. And I, I, it looked like that. It was all shriveled and like <laughs> all, it felt like it was all dehydrated because it had been in a box for nearly 20 years. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Instantly put it outside in like the rain and the snow because this was um, January when I found it. And then the next day when it was time to meditate, I got hold of it. And because it looks like that, like a, it reminds me of a caveman yes, thing. Yes, yes. But you feel the power, you know, because it comes from space because that's what is the tektite blasting with the sand in our earth in Czechoslovakia. Yep. I could literally feel the power of that landing into me and it literally – dunked me and sewed me right back into my soul it was the most powerful experience and i'd just been having going through the past six months a lot of losses and a lot of pain and trauma and working with meditation every morning but feeling like i was still off you know not in alignment and really struggling with that the minute moldavite came back into my life which was obviously all the plan i just went Wow. And then the next minute, light language started coming down and I could I could see the symbols. I could hear it. I was crying. I was feeling it all. My husband was next to me meditating. I wanted to join in with this light language, but I thought I'm going to scare the hell out of him if I start doing that now. But I was like that. Oh, my God, what is this? And then I realized what it was. So, you cool. know, we never stop learning, do we? If we're open and we plug in and it's not just for people who are spiritual, is it? Or people that are open to it. If if you just sit and take that time and look within, then all of these downloads are open to everybody, aren't they? And that, I was just truly blessed with that mold of, I, I, um, I feel it, it definitely brought in something brand new then, which it, I'm very, very grateful for. So yeah, we never, we never stop learning. And that's what I'm passing on. I actually made a course on it as well. I thought, let's just do that make a course about it as well so i did um 
what did I call it? Something like Moldavite, what's all the fuss or something? Because so many people were so excited about it, aren't they? But lots of people are scared of it as well. So I wanted to do a course about how it's not scary and just, you know, if you find it, it's for you. Bring it into your life. Bring it on, I say. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because it, 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 in a way, hid itself because you weren't ready for it. And then when I you wasn't ready. came back in your life and holding it now with the clothes, the color that you're wearing is very, your whole energy today is just holy. When you hold that in your hand and they see that with the color of your clothes as well, it's just like a, you, you, the energy around you is just loving it. Really, really. Oh, thank you. Well, I, I, I spoke about it at my retreat, but I'm very aware that I'm starting to get attachments to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no, you know, no, when you no. can feel your energy sending like a little <laughs> attachment going, your mouth. Hey, Christian, you're mine. And I'm like, no, I mustn't, I mustn't be attached. It's the Moldavite was a tool. Yeah, it was just yeah, a tool. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that sort of leads us on. There's so many crystals out there. How do people know what to, what, I mean, for myself as well, if I go to a shop or somewhere, I, you know, I'm just in, in heaven <clears throat> and I can walk out I'm, and I'm putting my hands over them, feeling the energy, but there's so many. Um, I'm sure in your courses you you cover this, but what's a basic sort of idea that people can understand um, what crystals they might need at that time or maybe one or two of the main ones that would be attractive to them? Yeah, it's um, it's so true because um, it's it, it you can't help but be over overloaded and overwhelmed when you walk into a crystal shop. And it's not just a crystal shop. If you went to a crystal fair, it's even worse because there's masses of high vibrational places there, aren't there? People sending energy, people channeling, people treating. It's just like, so I know whenever I go to places like that, I always have to have hematite in my pockets. I've got to feel grounded because I know if I'm coming from a different place, like a high vibration, then I'm not always going to be connected. And I, it doesn't mean that you'd make the wrong choice. I'm just going to pick something that, wouldn't all, all ordinarily resonate with me. I am a very earthbound, grounded person. I work at being very centered into my soul, very tethered to myself. Nature is a huge thing for me, being outside and getting connected. So I would say to anybody who walks into a crystal shop, like you just said then, Jamie, if you're feeling like, like that, Go and grab hold, if you've not took one with you, grab hold of a dark grounding crystal and just hold that for a few minutes. I know that the shop owners wouldn't mind you doing that. So you just hold it and just feel, you know, your earth coming down, feel the roots going down into the earth, feel your root chakra begin to ground. So you are coming from your own place and not energy that could be projected onto you or coming from anywhere else. It has to be here, your soul, and down into your root. And then... Have a look around. And what you very often find is your eyes land on a crystal. They just go there immediately. And that can be almost in instantaneous as you walk into that shop. And sometimes it's done it to me so many times. I'll be disappointed because I always are trying to think of an example if I've got one. Because I go for like the runts of the crystal shop. The ones that aren't always the most beautiful. The ones that have got little bits attached and a little bit gnarly. And I'm always like, what is it with you guys? Why would I not be drawn to this most beautiful, pretty? It's never the pretties with me. It's always the workers. So um, I do, but my eyes just go and they lock in and I'm like, oh, okay. And then when you pick it up, you'll kind of get that feeling. But you know what? If you don't get any of those feelings, then don't worry about it at all. If you start to pick loads up, then it can get a little bit crossed wired and too confusing. So I would go in take some deep breaths, be very grounded. If you feel very much into their energy space and you feel like you're zooming out, grab hold of a dark crystal. And then just even if you don't if you don't want people to look, it doesn't matter, just take some deep breaths, maybe close your eyes. And then when you open them, look round and see where your eyes land. And that will be the crystal for you. If that doesn't happen, there might not be one in there for you, but I, I can't actually imagine that there wouldn't be. Or you can do the hand thing, like you said, where you can go around feeling and feel if you feel an attachment or a warmth. Because so many people, I've seen this time and time again, give their own power away. Like they'll come into my treatment room, which is also a shop as well, and we've got lots of lovely crystals there. And 
they'll look at a crystal and they'll pick it up and then they say to me, what, which crystal should I get? You pick one. I'm like, you've just picked one. I saw you do it. They're like, oh, but I might have done that wrong. I'm like, no, you didn't. Whether you believe it or not, your intuition made your eyes land and grab for that crystal. So it's it's just having that faith and believing in yourself that your higher self, your inner knowledge, your higher being, whatever you want to call it, knows. They know exactly what you need for yourself. So it's when you walk in there, you will land upon that crystal without fail. I guarantee you. it's just trusting, trusting yeah. that deep breaths, grounding crystal and trust. Yeah. And I think what, what you said is right that when people, oh, well, you know, when people go into crystal shop, they might feel a little bit self-conscious, but people going into crystal shops now are more aware of what's going on around them. And if you're holding or you're closing your eyes and doing things, I don't think people will find that now, nowadays anyway, won't find that strange at all. I think that's that's the normal a lot more. Um, if there's one thing you'd like people to take away from this podcast, what would you like to share? Uh, oh, <laughs> that you have got this within you. You know, we all have that empowerment within you. I see it so many times that we're giving our power away. I think it's it's not helpful with social media as much as it's amazing and we're connecting in this way and Wi-Fi, again, amazing. But you know what? When I first started on my crystal journey, I did exactly that. I went into a shop and this was, what, 30 years ago. And I cried as soon as I walked in. And then I was really embarrassed because I was like, Ooh, because it the people also looked a little bit embarrassed for me because you didn't do that 30 years ago with crystal. You know, people and you didn't really touch them. I could tell they didn't like me touching them. And I cried because I thought, this is my destiny. I know I'm supposed to do this. And then I was a bit disappointed because I was stupidly thinking, oh, I don't want to work in a crystal shop. I was like, no, think a little bit higher than that. You're to work with crystals, not actually in this shop. But I think that. I didn't when I bought first bought those crystals, I didn't know anything about them, but they I just picked up what felt amazing. And I literally had them in my lap on the way home. I was driving in my car to go and show my mum, and they were burning, burning, burning on my lap. Wow. And so I was and I couldn't even remember the name of them, but they gave me a little piece of paper and wrote down what they were and nothing about what they were for. And it was it was before the internet, you know. Can you imagine such a thing? So then I was like, right, what do I do? So I was like, I'll go to the library. And I went to the library and the crystal book fell off in the library, literally fell out. And there weren't many crystal books then either. And I had this crystal book and I learned and learned, but there still wasn't enough information. So the most, and this is, I'm so grateful for that. The most that I have, I learned and what I would always pass on to anybody, you can take this from this podcast, is that if you get a crystal and you can't remember its name, you can't remember what it's for, you don't know where you got it from, so you just put it back again. Please don't. Get hold of it again. Hold it in your hand. Like if you say like my Moldavite, put your other hand over it, put it down, close your eyes, and just begin to connect because we are all crystal whisperers. And this crystal will start to either fizz in your hand or you'll start to feel something. You'll start to feel a flutter in your heart. You'll start to feel grounded or enlightened or heavy or sad or open. It might be the tiniest, tiniest little feeling, just a little tiny wisp, and you might disregard it. Do it again. And then you'll get more and more. And then you can begin to write it down because, yes, you could read up all about Moldavite on the Internet and it'll tell you so many things that other people have written their experiences, but it won't be your experience. And that's what you'll remember. So whatever you do, if you and I'm quite sure everyone who listens to this podcast and watches it you'll have a crystal collection or you'll have like two or three, but you're like, I, I do have them, but I don't know where they are. They're somewhere in my house. I bet you any money you'll go and get them and you'll look at them all, but you won't know the name of them. So go put them outside, put them in the gorgeous sunshine, in the rain, in the moonlight, get them recharged like you would with a phone and then bring them back in and begin to hold them and make some notes yourself before you begin to look in and see how you feel about them. Because I have lots of students that worry about that they can never remember the names of crystals, and there's millions of them. Yeah. But you know what? At the end of the day, we named them human beings. We yes. gave them names, didn't they? They did not come to us with names. They just came out of our earth, and we found them. So we don't... 
for them to work, we don't have to know their name. We just need to allow their vibration to connect with our vibration so we can change our own energy system. I mean, it's as simple as that, really. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, there is there is so much to go on into, and, and I'd love to get you back on again because going deeper into the spiritual and the vibrations on the, on the healing side, yeah. I mean, people are... are uh, uh, are crying out for this information, but they're really wanting this to be part of their lives now. So, um, Vicky, really, wow, thank you so much. Thank you for coming on and sharing oh, this with you. us. It's been lovely having you here. Yeah, no, it's been really thank good. You and so much, Dave. put your all your details down below. So, those who are wanting to contact you on um, Facebook and on Instagram and your website, um, and that'll be on those places that have the courses uh, as well thank and you. shop. Um, so all that information will be there. Um, see you guys. Hey, thanks for listening again. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment. And big shout out to Share again at webdesignshare.com. Thanks for, for being a part of this. And Vicky, is there anything that you'd like to, to finish with before we, before we uh, finish this podcast? Um, I don't think so. I, I feel I've covered it all. I think, like you said, I I could I could talk about just rose quartz for hours. You know, I could talk about one crystal, and I think that's almost the one that nearly everybody has. So I would love to come on again because I it is my biggest passion. And just to be able to, if just one little nugget of information, and that's just putting the crystal outside and then holding it, if that's all that you take from this, then that would be amazing because I know – Every single crystal changes lives. It can't not do that. It's quantum physics. It's not spiritual or what you believe in. There's a molecular change happening when we hold crystal and there's nothing we can do about that. They will change our lives. And that's the beauty of them. They're so amazing. So yeah, if that's all you take from this, then please do that. That would be just fantastic. Wonderful. But thank Wonderful. you, Jamie. It's been amazing. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you all the podcast listeners for this. And we look forward to catching up with you soon.